Between the 1840s and 1960s, the introduction of newer anesthetic agents necessitated comparisons to determine their potency and appropriate dosing. During this period, the depth of anesthesia was primarily assessed through clinical observations. In 1937, Dr. Arthur Ernest Gettel introduced a detailed classification system known as the Stages of Anesthesia, which relied on various physical signs such as breathing patterns, muscle tone, pupil diameter, lacrimation, and eyelid reflexes to assess anesthetic depth. In 1965, Eger et al. introduced the concept of minimum alveolar concentration as a standard measure of potency for volatile anesthetic agents. It measured the potency of inhalational agents based on the common end goal, that is abolition of movement to surgical incision. A lower MAC value indicates a more potent anesthetic, as less of the agent is needed to achieve the desired effect. For example, Isoflurane has a MAC of approximately 1.17%, meaning that a concentration of 1.17% in the alveoli is sufficient to prevent movement in 50% of patients during surgery. In contrast, desflurane has a higher MAC of about 6%, indicating that a higher concentration is needed to achieve the same effect. MAC is closely related to an anesthetic solubility in fat which is expressed as its oil-gas partition coefficient and described by the Meyer-Overton rule. An anesthetic with a high oil-gas partition coefficient is more soluble in lipid-rich tissues, such as the brain, allowing it to accumulate there more easily. As a result, these anesthetics require lower concentrations in the alveoli to achieve the desired effect since they rapidly partition into the brain, which has a high lipid content. In essence, anesthetics with higher oil gas partition coefficients tend to have lower MAC values because they are more potent at lower alveolar concentrations. For example, isoflurane, with an oil gas partition coefficient of 99 and a MAC of 1.17%, is more potent than desflurane, which has an oil gas partition coefficient of 18.7 and a MAC of 6%. MAC is defined as the minimum alveolar concentration of an inhaled anesthetic at one atmosphere pressure in 100% oxygen equilibrium, at which 50% of patients do not exhibit purposeful movement in response to a standardized noxious stimulus, such as a surgical skin incision. So there are quite a lot of conditions when defining MAC. We will dissect this definition to understand the concept of MAC in detail. Firstly, MAC deals with the concentration of anesthetic in the alveoli. It is expressed as the volume percent of alveolar gas, representing the percentage of anesthetic in the total volume of gases in the alveoli. It is measured by a gas analyzer from the end tidal or exhaled gas. For example, at MAC, the concentration of isoflurane is about 1.17% of total gas mixture in alveoli. In other words at the alveolar or end tidal concentration of 1.17%, the MAC of isoflurane is 1. In the picture given here, the patient's isoflurane concentration is 1.47% of total gas which corresponds to 1.28 times its MAC value. We know that anesthetics in the alveoli exerts partial pressure, which in turn, mirrors the partial pressure of the anesthetic in the brain. So anesthetic potency can also be expressed as minimum alveolar pressure. The relationship between concentration and partial pressure is expressed by this formula. So the partial pressure in the alveoli as a result of isoflurane would be calculated as 8.89 mm of mercury at sea level. So, at 1 mac the partial pressure generated by isoflurane should be 8.89 mm of mercury. 
This alveolar pressure is critical because anesthetics travel from the lungs, blood, and brain based on their partial pressure gradients, not their concentration. So, minimum alveolar concentration can be defined as the alveolar partial pressure of an inhaled anesthetic at which 50% of patients do not respond to a standard surgical stimulus. For isoflurane at MAC, it is 8.89 mm of mercury and remains constant. We will see how concentration changes to maintain partial pressure next. The second condition in defining MAC is the atmospheric pressure at which the MAC is determined. MAC is measured at 1 atmosphere or 760 mm of mercury to ensure consistency and standardization across clinical practice. For example, at the end tidal concentration of 1.17%, isoflurane generates partial pressure of 8.89 mm of mercury at 760 mm of mercury. Changes in atmospheric pressure greatly affects the partial pressure. This means that if the isoflurane vaporizer is left at 1.17% at higher altitude or lower atmospheric pressure, the resulting partial pressure will be lower than 8.89 mm of mercury, leading to inadequate anesthesia. To compensate, the end tidal concentration of isoflurane must be increased. For example, at 5,000 feet, where atmospheric pressure is 630 mm of mercury, the required concentration to maintain 8.9 mm of mercury is about 1.41%. At 10,000 feet, where atmospheric pressure is 523 mm of mercury, the required concentration increases to about 1.7%. In nutshell, by keeping MAC standardized at one atmosphere, we ensure that anesthetic potency is always expressed relative to a fixed reference point, that is partial pressure. This allows clinicians to make altitude adjustments without changing the definition of MAC itself. MAC is also measured under 100% oxygen and anesthetic mixture. This measurement removes the effects of other gases like nitrous oxide, which could interfere with MAC measurement due to the additive anesthetic effects. When combining different inhaled anesthetics, the total anesthetic effect is roughly equivalent to the sum of each individual agent's MAC fraction. Since 104% nitrous oxide equals 1 mac, we can determine how much mac is contributed by 50% nitrous oxide. So 50% nitrous oxide contributes 0.48 mac. In that case, the alveolar concentration of isoflurane needed is lessened as nitrous oxide contributes almost 50% of total mac. Now we can only use 0.7% instead of 1.17% of isoflurane to reach 1 mac which is sufficient for anesthesia. Here are the mac of anesthetics in 100% oxygen and 60-70% to nitrous oxide. Using 100% oxygen also reduces the dilution effect due to nitrogen present in air. If we give a lower percentage of oxygen, a part of the gas contains nitrogen. As nitrogen is largely insoluble and remains in the alveoli, it causes dilution of anesthetics in the alveoli causing lowered alveolar partial pressure. And since MAC is defined by the alveolar partial pressure of the anesthetic, Anything that reduces this pressure can affect MAC measurements. Whereas with 100% oxygen, the uptake of oxygen into the blood continuously creates space for anesthetic gas, helping maintain a steady alveolar anesthetic concentration. The endpoint of MAC measurement is the concentration at which 50% of patients do not move in response to a surgical stimulus. This is analogous to ED50 in pharmacology, which represents the dose at which 50% of the population responds to a drug. 
By using this approach, MAC provides a standardized measure of anesthetic potency. We also have MAC 95 which is the anesthetic concentration at which 95% of patients remain immobile in response to a surgical stimulus. Though the term MAC 95 is not commonly used in clinical anesthesia, it is often expressed as 1.2 to 1.3 times MAC. Achieving MAC 95 requires higher doses when no adjuncts, such as opioids or muscle relaxants, are used. In practice, MAC 95 is more clinically relevant, as it ensures nearly all patients remain immobile for surgery. Similarly, MAC 5 is the concentration at which only 5% of patients do not move or 95% do move. Though the effect of anesthetics as measured by MAC is tied to immobility, there are other endpoints of that can be used to measure potency. These are called MAC derivatives. Several specific MAC derivatives are recognized, including MAC amnesia, MAC awake, MAC unawake, MAC intubation, and MAC bar. MAC amnesia is the anesthetic concentration required to suppress the recollection of a noxious stimulus in 50% of patients, typically around 0.25 MAC. The primary goal of achieving MAC amnesia is to prevent the formation of explicit episodic memories during surgical or procedural events, as failure to do so may lead to the development of post-traumatic stress disorder. Next we have MAC awake and unawake. MAC awake is the anesthetic concentration at which 50% of patients become unresponsive to verbal commands, such as eye-opening requests, during emergence. It marks the point of regaining consciousness as anesthetic concentration decreases during emergence. It is typically about half of the standard MAC value. MAC unawake, in contrast, is the concentration at which 50% of patients remain responsive to verbal commands during induction, indicating the point of losing consciousness as anesthetic levels rise. It is close to MAC. The relationship between MAC awake and unawake creates a hysteresis dose response curve, where achieving unresponsiveness during induction requires a higher concentration than that needed for regaining responsiveness during emergence. This discrepancy is explained by neural inertia, a phenomenon where the brain resists change in its state. Consequently, transitioning from responsiveness to unresponsiveness demands a higher concentration often close to the standard MAC value. MAC intubation refers to the minimum alveolar concentration of an inhaled anesthetic at which 50% of patients can be intubated without movement or adverse reactions like cough or gag. This concentration is typically higher than the standard MAC value. MAC bar stands for minimum alveolar concentration that blocks adrenergic response. It refers to the alveolar concentration of an inhaled anesthetic at which 50% of patients show no autonomic responses, like heart rate or blood pressure increases to surgical incision. This measure is based on catecholamine levels in venous blood. MAC bar is typically 1.7 to 2.0 times higher than the standard MAC value. MAC is affected by various factors which can be grouped as physiological, pharmacological, and pathological factors. When a factor increases MAC in an individual, volatile anesthetics have decreased potency for that person requiring a higher concentration of the agent. In this case, the dose-response curve will shift to the right. On the contrary, factors that decrease MAC increase potency, so those patients will require a lower concentration of the volatile agent shifting the curve to left. Age significantly affects the minimum alveolar concentration of volatile anesthetics. 
Mac is highest in infants around 6 months of age and decreases with both younger neonates and advancing age. After infancy, MAC declines approximately 6 to 7% per decade. This means elderly patients require lower concentrations of volatile anesthetics to achieve the same anesthetic depth as younger adults. The reduction in MAC with age is attributed to changes in central nervous system sensitivity rather than alterations in drug pharmacokinetics. Body temperature significantly influences the minimum alveolar concentration of inhaled anesthetics. Research indicates that for every 1 degree Celsius decrease in body temperature, MAC decreases by approximately 4% to 5% between 32 to 37 degrees Celsius. This reduction is due to hypothermia's effect on reducing cerebral metabolism, thereby lowering the anesthetic requirement. Conversely, hyperthermia increases MAC, necessitating higher concentrations of anesthetic agents to achieve the desired effect. Notably, nitrous oxide is an exception, as its MAC remains unchanged with variations in body temperature. This table depicts all the factors affecting the MAC. Stimulants such as cocaine and ephedrine can elevate the MAC because a higher anesthetic concentration is required to counteract their stimulant effects. Drugs like alcohol and amphetamines have dual effects, chronic alcohol consumption increases the MAC, whereas acute alcohol intoxication reduces it. Acute amphetamine use causes an increase in the MAC, while chronic use can lead to a decrease. Hyponatremia can reduce the MAC because lower sodium levels may depress central nervous system activity, whereas hypernatremia has the opposite effect. Sedative medications such as benzodiazepines, propofol, and opioids reduce the MAC. Pregnancy also reduces the MAC for inhaled anesthetics. Studies show that during early pregnancy, the MAC decreases by approximately 27% to 30% for agents such as halothane and influrane. This heightened sensitivity persists throughout pregnancy, with reductions of up to 40% at term, likely due to hormonal changes, particularly elevated progesterone levels, hypoxia, acidosis, and hypercarbia each reduce the MAC required for inhaled anesthetics. Severe hypoxia can decrease the MAC by approximately 10% to 50%. Similarly, acute metabolic acidosis leads to a reduction in the MAC. Elevated carbon dioxide levels in the blood, hypercarbia, also decrease the MAC, likely due to the central nervous system depressant effects of increased carbon dioxide levels. Anemia has been shown to decrease the MAC for inhaled anesthetics, probably due to the diminished oxygen-carrying capacity associated with anemia, which increases the central nervous system sensitivity to anesthetic agents. Lastly, certain factors such as gender, weight, duration of anesthesia, and thyroid status do not appear to affect the MAC.